Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Boy, do I love it when God takes me on a little journey. And that's what happened after I read the first reading this morning. And of course, I have to share it with you because I just feel that we all need to hear this more often than we think. Because in some cases, I'm not even sure we're even aware of how much we do this. What am I talking about? Well, let's go to the readings here. It's 1 Corinthians 12. 12 through 14, 27 through 31. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. Now you are Christ's body and individual parts of it. Some people God has designated to, whoops, some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, coughing here. Hold on. Oh, that was a good one. Let me start over. Now you are Christ's body and individual parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Okay, what did this get me to thinking about? It got me to thinking about spiritual envy which also just led me to reflect on my life and how uncomfortable I was in my skin all the time. So let's talk about you. Are you comparing yourself to other people too often? It's actually a sin called vanity. And it's not just about wanting yourself to look perfect. That's not what it's about. It's actually a dis ordered way of being so concerned about what people think of you. You think about it too often. So you're constantly trying to be perfect in their eyes, not your eyes, their eyes. And I believed every lie. I share this in my talk. You know, I could sum it up in the Anjali commercial. And I'm telling you, if you have not seen that commercial, which it's not on air anymore. I mean, it's been gone since 1970. Go online, put in your search engine, Ajali, E-N-J-O-L-I, commercial 1980. That's when it was, 1980, not 1970. And watch it. It will make you laugh. It will like... (sighs) It'll bring you back to that time and it'll, it looks like it's such a recent sexy commercial, but it's hilarious how it's not when we look at it here in 2022. Okay. But at 10 years old, that commercial freaked me out. I'm watching this big, beautiful six foot tall, thin model looking woman who's in a business suit. She's got this long blonde hair. She's beautiful. She's got this beautiful home. She's flipping dollar bills in her hands. 
You know, I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never, never, never let you forget you're a man, cause I'm a woman, Hajali. Yeah, I do that in my talk, because it's a fun song, and I sing it a lot better when I'm not stuffed with snot. (laughs) Okay, or coffee, phlegmy, bleh. All right, well, that's it. Here I was watching this commercial as a 10-year-old, a chubby mousy brown haired tomboy and it rocked my world I thought oh my gosh I have to be that I better get working I better get started now and that was what started my entire life where I was looking at everyone and I know everyone did this at at young ages right you were looking at Susie who's prettier Christy plays better soccer Janine has a better family she has sisters. I don't have sisters. I want sisters. I like her parents better than mine. Blah, blah. I mean, you do this constant comparison, not only to the people that you know, but the TV programs, the commercials, the JCPenney catalog that was about an inch thick that used to come in our mailbox even made me feel self-conscious because I wasn't as thin as those girls. My mind and my eyes were so distorted by the world. And then it continued to get worse because most of my life I never watched anything but pop culture stuff. I read all the smut magazines. I read all the magazine magazines, which were just as smutty as the tabloid magazines, you know, like the Inquirer types of things and Us and Star. I read all those stupid things. I watched all those stupid programs. I had Days of Our Lives recorded, which I hear is going off the air, for decades And all I was doing was reinforcing the negativity, the fact that, wait a minute, I need to look like that. Now let's move to our spiritual life. I want to pray like that person. I want to be reverent in mass. I want to stop doing whatever unhealthy habit I'm doing like that person did. How come I don't get those spiritual gifts? How come I don't have these supernatural experiences? Why don't I have the gift of tongues, healing, right? Administration. (laughs) Lord, I would take the gift of administration any day if you want to give it to me. It's just not in my, I don't have it. But this is the point. It's reiterated in the Bible that the church is made up of all different people. Sizes, colors, shapes, backgrounds, cultures. And that's on purpose. And it's beautiful. And in the world, you are perfectly and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made, but I say perfectly and wonderfully made because God made you. He didn't make a mistake. And yeah, we're fearful because we love God. We fear God, right? We don't want to please him if we've received the true gift of the Holy Spirit, which is fear of the Lord. Versus we don't want to go to hell. There's a big difference. There's a there's a fundamental heart shift when your knowledge of your faith And your understanding come from your brain down to your heart. And then all of a sudden, everything clicks. You want to change your life. You humble yourself and go to God. And so today, can we just ask the Lord to give us that beautiful gift of detachment and of acceptance of ourselves to love ourselves the way we are right now? Right now, not after we finish this degree, not after we get married, not after we have a kid, not after we get this job, not after we lose that 10 pounds, 15, 20, 50, you know, not after I change these things, after I divorce my husband, after this happens, after my kids get out of school, after they go to school, you know, it's like excuses, excuses, excuses. And yet at the same time, they are always going to leave you empty. Because the real love and acceptance comes from God. 
And the minute God gives you that beautiful whitewash, gosh, I don't even know how else to explain it. But once you get this beautiful shower of God's grace of detachment, people don't really matter anymore. You know who matters? God. And we are called to be saints, which means we must respond to the love that we have been given, this beautiful gift of faith. Learn to change our lives, learn to live with God, learn to allow him really to change our lives, and then to share him. Because when you're living for that audience of one, Nothing else matters anymore. And that is what we all need to pray for. Pray for detachment. And pray for the Holy Spirit to possess you. We need to be communicating with the Spirit all day. And let's ask again, rise up to my eyes, Lord, the thing. Not things. Because I'll be honest with you, when I... When I was given that beautiful gift of God's wisdom of my life, it was like (laughs) the crystal ball looking into everything that I did during my research and all of that. I had a aha moment, if you will, and I had to walk up to my bathroom mirror and say, holy moly, how are you going to change all of this stuff? You've got to change everything the way you think, what you believe. What you say, what you do, oh my gosh, how are you going to do this? You got your work cut out for you, girl. You used to think it was just losing weight and exercising? Woo! But it wasn't until I realized I couldn't do it on myself, fall after fall after fall, almost a year of this battle, almost two. Then you ask for God to finally come in and you let go. You say, look, I can't do this. And I'm tired of trying to be God. You're God. I'm giving it to you. I can't. I'm, I'm not you, (laughs) God. Okay. We're running out of time. Let's say a brief prayer before we go on our day, loving everyone for their uniqueness and being happy for the uniqueness. How horrible would it be if this earth was filled with the same people doing the same thing, looking the same way? Having the same skills. Oh, how horrible. Horrible, horrible. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit. As we breathe this air in, we want you to enter every cell, every bone, every nerve, and most importantly, flood our heart with you. Help us to love ourselves like you love us, Lord. Help us not to compare ourselves, not to be envious or jealous. Help us to appreciate the differences in other people and to be happy for those who have great talents and use them well. But today, Lord, please come into our heart in a real physical, emotional, spiritual way that shows us in no uncertain terms, clear as day, that you love us and you're happy with us right now. You know you don't want us to stay where we're at and we understand that, but that you love us right now just as much as you will tomorrow or as you did yesterday. And we ask for you to help us love us, accept ourselves as we are. Stop comparing. Stop wishing for something we will never be. And be grateful to you for creating us exactly how we are for such a time as this. The world needs love, God, and we need to love ourselves in order to love others. So we ask 
in the name of your son, Jesus, for that one petition today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go love yourself. Seri- not in that way. <laughs> you all know we've talked about too much self-gratification and porn. That was a really bad joke. I hope it made you laugh. But seriously, do go love yourself. It's okay to be exactly where you're at. And you're not going to be happier when you're somewhere else. That's why God says, live in today. And that's why Satan wants us to freak out about the future and regret the past and not live in this moment, which is when God's graces pour out to us, when we see him, when we feel him, when we experience living in the spirit of God. Don't let Satan win. You're smarter than he is, even though we're not. (laughs) You can. You can completely dismiss him. You are more powerful than he is. With Jesus' name and the blood of Jesus in your prayers and in your deliverance, But remember that he and all of his little minions have been watching you all your life. This is why they know you better than you know you. And that's why we got to pay more attention to what's going on and living a more purposeful, meaningful life. Because when we have meaning to the things that we're doing and we attach Jesus to all of our tasks, including the mundane ones like cleaning, things become holy. Everything we do becomes a spiritual act, an offering, a prayer. Work and prayer, work and prayer. Everything that we do is practically work when we're awake. Okay, I'm getting on another topic. Okay, you know how I get sometimes, (laughs) y'all? I get a little crazy and I just want to keep going. All righty. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And you love you. You love you. Just give yourself a big hug. I know it sounds weird, but wrap your arms around yourself and just say, you know what? I love you. Because there's no guidebook except God, (laughs) except the God positioning system, right? It's the Bible. It's the catechism. It's his church. That's our guidebook. But most of us don't open it up. Don't listen. Try to take our own way find ourselves in traffic jams and taking three more hours to get to our destination kind of thing. But we were smarter. We were right. We had a better way. When God got there a whole three hours earlier, had three cocktails down before he even walked in the door. (laughs) Just kidding. Okay. Now I'm getting crazy. I love you. Have a blessed and inspired day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today.